Prompt engineering is all about how we get large language models to give us the answers we need to solve our problems and help us with our tasks. We face new challenges every day, and having tools like GitHub Copilot by our side can really make a difference in finding solutions. However, it's important to remember that these tools might not always hit the mark perfectly with their answers. That's why it's crucial to ask our questions in a simple, specific, and short way. This approach helps us get straight to the point and receive accurate responses. I'll share some tips and tricks on how to communicate effectively with GitHub Copilot while coding in Visual Studio. By using these strategies, we can get better help and make our journey a lot smoother. So let's get started. Let's start off by simply taking a look at the demo application that we're gonna be working with throughout this video. I have a weather.json file, and here I have a bunch of countries. Inside of each country are some cities, and then months. We see January, February, March, et cetera, and each have a high and a low data point here. I'm actually running the application already. So what I can do is open up the browser and then I'm gonna hit try it out to try out this endpoint that we have here. It's a get weather forecast for slash countries. And when we try this out, it returns a list of countries that we have available in that JSON. So throughout this video, alongside learning some prompt engineering, best practices for GitHub Copilot inside of Visual Studio, we're also gonna be adding and improving to this project. All right, let's start by writing some code. I wanna create an endpoint that will return the cities of a provided country. As an example before, we have this one that returns the countries, but in this case, we wanna be able to provide the country as a parameter. Now, when you're writing comments to leverage as your prompts, you wanna make sure that you are single, short, and specific, right? But you don't wanna be too short, right? If I just write some code, for example, it's probably not gonna provide the best suggestions for me. In this case, it's not providing any suggestion really. But if I leverage this prompt as an opportunity to just explain what I want, in my case, exactly what I just said, return cities of a provided country, perhaps this will provide us a better suggestion. And actually this looks like what I wanted to do. And we can just hit tab to accept this suggestion here. Awesome. Now what I'm gonna do is run this and we're gonna wait for the browser to pop up and we should now be able to test this. So I know we have Peru as a country here. Hit execute and this is correct. It is now returning the cities of a provided country. Awesome. So you see here, it's definitely a balance of those three S's, right? Single, specific, and short. The more you provide prompts and the better that you are at explaining what you're trying to get at, the better responses, the better suggestions that you're gonna get. And obviously the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at creating these prompts. All right, so let's now see how we can add some functionality to this code that has been created for us. What I'm gonna do is select the uh, cities uh, endpoint that we just created. I'll do alt forward slash and ask it to, I need to make sure the provided country is in title case. Can you add that please? All of the countries in our weather.json start with a capital. So if we were to provide a country with a lowercase, we'd run into some errors. So now I'm asking Copilot by invoking it, invoking it with alt forward slash to go ahead and add that functionality for me. And it looks like it is actually doing it correctly. I'm gonna hit accept here. And what I'm gonna do is run this once more. And now when we go to our cities endpoint, I'm gonna hit try it out. I'm gonna try Peru with a capital. Execute, works perfectly. And now I'm gonna try Peru with a lowercase here. And it works as well. We'll try England, execute. We've got that correctly. So it looks like this functionality is now working. So now you can see how leveraging your prompt engineering experience to really explain what type of functionality you need to GitHub Copilot is gonna help you implement these functionalities a lot quicker. GitHub Copilot is great at implementing specific tasks. So the first step to get a specific result is obviously highlighting the code that we wanna work with. So in this case, that endpoint. And I could ask it something like, what error handling should I implement for this endpoint? 
Now, from experience, I'm thinking a null parameter, an empty parameter, uh, something that's not formatted correctly, or a parameter that doesn't exist. And Copilot is telling us argument null exception, key not found exception, JSON exception, and a couple of other things. And because we were able to highlight the specific code, provide it a specific task, we can also now preview the suggestions that it's provided. We're going to hit preview, and it's going to tell us what is actually going to change here. So I'm going to hit accept because these are all things that I do want to implement. I'm going to run this now, and we should now be able to to test out our error handling here. So what I'm going to do first is provide a country that I know does exist, Peru. Perfect. Now a country that I know doesn't exist in our JSON, Colombia, correct. And let's just provide empty, we'll do a couple of spaces there. And it's telling us the country field is required because we provided something empty. Awesome. Again, because we were able to highlight the code specifically and provide a specific task, GitHub Copilot was able to do the job. All right, so GitHub Copilot does have something called slash commands and it has a bunch of pre-configured context and functionality that it can implement without you having to specifically outline what you need in your prompt. So as an example, what I'm gonna do here is actually create a test for this Git Cities endpoint that we've created. Who here likes to test their code? Everyone at home should be raising their hand. <laughs> so we're gonna do alt slash here once more. And what I'm gonna do is say tests and let's try not providing a prompt additional to the slash command and see what it generates for us. Now I do already have a test file and GitHub Copilot will actually know that I have this file instead of creating another one. And it tells us here what it's gonna add for us here. It looks like it's adding a git cities with valid country return list of cities. It's created actually a couple of uh, tests here. Git cities with invalid country, git cities with no country get cities with empty country. Okay, awesome. Now, I could add all of these, but we could also get a little bit more specific. So what I can do is go back here and then once again, invoke Copilot and use the tests slash command once more, but I can this time provide a prompt saying, create a test that uses Spain as the provided country and returns Seville as the city. Let's see what it does for us there. It should now just generate one test for us because we got a little bit more specific here. Get cities, return list of cities for Spain. Awesome, that looks like what we wanted to do. I'm gonna scroll down here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is go to test, test explorer and run our, all our tests here and see it worked for us and awesome. We can see how slash commands with their built-in functionality can help us accomplish things like creating tests a lot quicker. Something else I could have done to have gotten this uh, end result here is given GitHub Copilot the reference to the file that actually has the data. So I didn't have to guess Madrid or Seville or anything like that, right? So what I'm actually gonna do is erase this here and I'm gonna do alt uh, slash here and then say test, test for country Spain and return the correct city from, and then in order to reference a file, we use the pound symbol and we'll say weather.json because that's where our data is. And now it should correctly know that uh, the city it needs to provide is Seville, here it is. And I would have gotten to this end result, the suggestion a lot quicker had I referenced the file. And this is something handy you should absolutely include in your prompts because again, the more specific you can get, the better result. All right, let's talk a little bit about refinement, which is essentially providing an initial prompt and then providing a little bit more context to get the suggestion that Copilot provides as tailored as possible for the solution that you are looking for, right? I'm gonna select our endpoint once more and let's use another slash command. Let's use the optimized one, which is gonna analyze our code and provide any improvements that Copilot thinks would actually make a difference in our project. Here is the optimized version of your selected code. It looks like it's gonna remove Yes, it's removing the try catch block and it's also replaced linked with a for each loop. Interesting. Okay. Now let's say in the case that I know I don't want to remove link, I could say I don't want to remove link here. Let's see what it provides here. 
And of course, it actually provided an additional suggestion here. So it's probably going to add that one here too. If you, prefer to, if you prefer to keep a link, you could still optimize code by removing the try catch block. The try get property method is used to safely access the property without throwing an exception if the property doesn't ex does not exist. Therefore, the JSON exception will be thrown in this context, making the try catch block unnecessary, which makes sense here. So pretty good. Had I provided in my initial prompt, so let's do this once more. Let's say optimize. So let's now think about refining our prompt, right? Yeah, let's say how to improve this code. Do not remove link. I need to keep it for readability purposes. Let's see if we can get to that last suggestion in sort of a quicker way because we provided a better prompt. We refined our prompt here too as well. So here is the optimized version of your code. And let's see what it's telling us here. The main change here is removing the try catch block to only cover the code that might actually throw a JSON exception. Awesome. So it looks like it is actually working here for us. Also, it's worth noting that the to list call at the end of link carry will cause the entire sequence to be iterated immediately. If the sequence is large, this could be a performance issue. In our case, we have a small data set, probably not going to be an issue, but something to consider if you have a large data set. And awesome, you see how we got to what we kind of wanted to get to in the first place a little quicker by refining our prompt. And again, this is just a skill that you're going to pick up the more you leverage these tools. And of course, Copilot is not only great for generating code and having a back and forth with questions, optimizing, and things like that. It can also help us improve our documentation. I'm going to open their Solution Explorer, and I have a readme here, but it's a terrible readme because it doesn't have anything in it. What I'm going to do here is uh, clear the chat, and I'm going to provide uh, the name of this file, which is readme. Uh, this one, this readme here, actually. We can reference a file using the pound. And I'm going to say, how can I improve my readme? Since I am referencing the file that I actually have open here, it's going to be able to understand where it needs to add the suggestions. A good readme file typically includes the filing sections, the project title. It says you already have this. And it's providing other things that we can additionally insert into our readme, which is fantastic because documentation is important, right? I can hit preview here, hit accept, and we've got a much better readme than what we had before here. We can also use uh, ghost text. So I can say, this is a .NET API it provides weather information for travel destinations. It is part of, and I'm assuming it was trying to uh, suggest a project link here. Uh, anyway, uh, that is how you can improve documentation and referencing files with GitHub Copilot. And that's it for this video on prompt engineering with GitHub Copilot and Visual Studio. Be sure to check out all the resources that we will have in the description. Any comments, suggestions, feedback, please leave them in the comment sections. I'll be taking a look and we'll see you in the next video with more awesome stuff on GitHub Copilot with Visual Studio.